Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here, and today we're going to be looking at 10 scary criminals who cried in court. I think we can all agree, if we were in court, we'd be pretty scared. You wouldn't be in court unless it was for something serious. And you might think that most people in court are just hardened criminals. But clearly, this is not the case, and sometimes these hardened criminals break under pressure, no matter how insane their crimes are. So leave a like and subscribe, and comment I subscribed, and I'll try to reply. Coming in at number 10, we have Antonio Barbo. Antonio Barbo may seem like an innocent kid, based on how young he is, but in reality, he's anything but innocent. In 2013, Barbo took his grandmother's life with a hatchet. Several weeks later, he was arrested and taken to court. In court, he pleaded guilty and even gave the court a statement. The statement was very apologetic and was clearly very hard for Antonio to read. This is when he broke down in tears, unable to continue. So, his defense attorney took over but then he started crying too. This was clearly very emotional and upsetting for both of them. Despite this and his guilty pleading, the minimum sentence the judge gave him was 36 years. This was because of how horrible his crime was. Even the judge described it as being nothing short of horrific. You know a crime is terrible if a judge who's been working for 24 years calls it the worst case he's ever seen. Next up is Ashford Thompson. In 2008, Ashford Thompson came after a police officer with a pistol after an argument at a bar. He took the officer's life, and Thompson was arrested and taken to court. During the court proceedings, he became frustrated with how he was being treated. This reached a point where he was in tears, saying there was no point in the trial. He felt it was guaranteed that he was going to be given the electric chair by the judge and was angry that there was no other way. He clearly hasn't heard the phrase, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. He broke down in tears and began begging for forgiveness from the judge. Of course, the judge was not affected by this due to the terrible crime Ashford committed. Instead, the judge gave him more time to prepare his case, as that was Ashford's main problem. But he continued sobbing and still felt he would not have justice. All these tears didn't help, however, as he still received the worst sentence a judge can give. I suppose this proves a sob story doesn't always mean you get off easy. The worst part about this is, even though he was sad about his own treatment, he didn't care about the officer's life he took. No wonder the judge gave him no sympathy at all. Next up is Dylan Shoemaker. In 2013, Dylan Shoemaker did something many people would consider unthinkable. Shoemaker was left alone with his girlfriend's one-year-old son, Austin. When just two hours into babysitting, Shoemaker called 911, telling the police the child was unresponsive. When the police officers arrived, they found bruises all over Austin. They attempted CPR, but at this point, the child had passed away. They arrested Dylan, who was charged with being responsible for the boy's passing. Then, during the court case, he began crying and apologizing for what he'd done. Now, you probably think he really means it, and it's kind of sad he was jailed after being so emotional. But after hearing what he said before the court case, you'll probably change your mind. He was reported to have said, probably all I'll do is cry and they'll feel sorry for me. So, his sadness was just to get on the side of the jury. That's really disgusting and such a horrible thing to do. When this was found out, he was given a minimum of 25 years in jail. Clearly the crying didn't work as planned. Next up is Blake Jefferson. 22-year-old Blake Jefferson was arrested for taking the life of his own mother. This was apparently due to the fact that he was angry at her at the time, causing him to lash out. It was almost certain he would receive a prison sentence. And because of this, Jefferson began wailing and crying mid-trial. This, unlike Shoemaker, was genuine, however. Jefferson really did love his mother, and the fact he'd caused her passing was crushing for him. The worst part of his crying and wailing wasn't over, however. Later on, when being sentenced to 17 years in prison, he began crying and screaming again. He said he was scared of how he would be treated in prison and was afraid of going. There are many famous videos of him and his outbursts, and part of the reason is because of his actual fear when being sentenced. He did appear to be genuinely sad about what he'd done. However, if he felt so bad about what he'd done, he shouldn't have done it in the first place. Next up is Gary Ridgway. So, we've looked at some people who have done some horrible things, but this guy is on a completely different level. Gary is responsible for taking the lives of over 90 women and girls. He was arrested in 2001, when four of those girls were linked back to him. He appeared in court, appearing at first to be completely remorseless. You'd assume that kind of person would remain completely unaffected by their actions. But actually, this is quite the opposite. Although he began completely remorseless, his mood changed when the victim's parents began to talk. After as much as one sentence from a victim's father, Ridgway began to tear up. 
the realization of what he'd actually done made him start to cry. The impact of this victim's parents' speech made Gary admit to more crimes he wasn't even charged with. He later admitted to the aforementioned 90 women and children whose lives he took. It may sound crazy, but he clearly didn't realize the impact of what he'd done. This is why hearing the father's story had such a huge impact on him. But believe me, that doesn't make him a good person in any way. Next up is Nicole Kiffmiller. Nicole Kiffmiller is a 19 year old blogger from the Bay Area. She unfortunately had an unplanned pregnancy without any of her family knowing. In order to get rid of the child without her family or friends finding out, she had the child. She did this without her parents knowledge, in her bathroom with no help, using just a home birthing kit. She then left the baby in a trash container on a random street, planning to forget all about the child. The baby was later found, and she was arrested for taking the baby's life. This was obviously a tough decision for her to make in the first place, and being made to talk about such a painful subject must have been very upsetting. This explains why during the trial, she began crying while talking about her child. She was judged as guilty and given a long sentence. This made her cry even more and caused a great deal of sadness for her. This is one of the few people on this list you may feel kind of sorry for, but then again, her crimes were shocking, so maybe not. Next up we have Amanda Spaduti. Amanda Spaduti became infamous when she was involved in a car incident. In 2010, she was drunk while driving, which led to a collision causing four people to lose their lives. This was obviously a tragedy, and something you can see badly affected her. This obviously meant when she had to stand trial for what she'd done, she could barely cope, and when she had to hear from her victims' families, she began to tear up. This only got worse when she gave her own account and began weeping even more. She was given a 12-year sentence, and during the act actual sentencing did not appear to be saddened or upset by the sentence. This may show she didn't care about the sentence of her crime, and instead just cares about the victims and their families. This might show she has real sympathy and cares deeply for the people involved in the incident. She doesn't seem like she deserved 12 years, given her sadness and sympathy. But then again, she did accidentally take the lives of many people, so maybe the sentence does make sense. Next up we have Jaleel Smith Riley. Jaleel Smith Riley was given one of the most severe punishments of all time. He ended a woman's life in 2013. Smith Riley was arrested following the terrible incident. He was then taken to court where he stood trial. He pled not guilty despite the overwhelming evidence to suggest he did commit this act. And as a result of this, he was sentenced to life with no parole, which basically means his chances of freedom are almost non-existent. This shocking news caused him to break down. He launched into a crying fit and began screaming that it wasn't him. The fact that there was so much evidence showing he did do the crime meant pleading not guilty was pointless. He took the news so poorly, it's almost surprising. I mean, after taking somebody's life, what do you expect? Next up is Kayla Norton. In February 2017, Kayla Norton was given a six year prison sentence, and you're probably wondering what that was for. Well, as part of a two day event, she went around being nasty to minorities. This involved pointing pistols and yelling at people in the streets and in stores around the Douglas and Paulding counties. She also caused trouble at an eight year old black boy's birthday party. This led to many complaints and eventually police were sent to deal with her. After two days, she was finally arrested and put in jail. As if the arresting and six year sentence wasn't bad enough, she was also banned from the counties. And this caused her to cry. She was very patriotic and loved her county, which meant she was sad when she was told she could not return. She was willing up and crying for minutes in court. It's crazy that she thinks getting kicked out of her county is worse than being nasty to minorities. She was also with an accomplice, Jose Torres. He received a much longer sentence of 13 years, as well as being banned from the counties. He on the other hand composed himself and did not cry during sentencing. Next up we have Arthur Booth. This story is just plain sad. Arthur Booth was a very promising and talented child. He had very high test scores in both math and science and had aspirations of being a neurosurgeon. At the same time, he was good friends with a girl called Minty Glazer who wanted to be a lawyer. These two most likely thought they would never meet again after school, but they would be wrong. After a series of narcotics charges, Booth was put on trial. During the trial, the judge asked him if he'd been to Nautilus Middle School. And at that moment, Booth realized the judge was Glazer, his close childhood friend. Upon realizing this, he burst into tears and continued like that throughout the rest of the trial. This was because he saw that she had achieved her dream job while he had not due to narcotics use. This made him realize the mistakes he'd made in life and caused a serious emotional response from him. Booth served his sentence and then him and Mindy reunited. He has now cleaned up his act and Glazer and he are once again good friends. 
And that just about wraps up this video. Check out the poll in the top right corner and you can vote for the scariest criminal who cried in court. I think it's Arthur Booth because that's a crazy coincidence and an amazing story. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe.